Let's draft a chest welt pocket for blazers. Hi, I'm Jean. Welcome to Pattern Studio 101. This channel is all about pattern making. Are you making patterns? Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you get an alarm when I post a new video. Not all blazers have a chest welt, but many of them have it. It can be functional, so you can put a handkerchief or a flower. Sometimes it's not functional, so it's just design. And the shape also varies. If you work as a tailor, like men's suit, they call them like straight, slanted, bruchetta, patch, etc. But I haven't heard that kind of names in woman's blazer. Anyway, let's draft a functional breast welt. You need a front body. It can be just one piece or two pieces like mine. The breast welt will be on the left front. It's not viewer's left, wearer's left front. Measure from the high shoulder point, HSP, about seven inches or seven inches and a half, and draw a horizontal line. You can make a chest welt straight like this, but I'm going to draw a little bit angled, something like this. There's no right or wrong, so you can play around and see what angles and shapes you like. Position also depends on your design. But keep in mind that you need space from the armor line, at least one inch. I'm gonna have one inch and a quarter distance from the armhole and three inches and three quarters of welt length. So this is my welt length. Depending on where the princess line is, the welt can be placed on both panels. It's totally okay. Go back to my pattern and the welt height, one inch. This is my welt. Because we are making a functional pocket, let's draw a pocket. For pockets, I would like to have half of an inch wider at both sides for searching. Length maybe three inches. Even if I made this functional, nobody's gonna really use this pocket, right? So it doesn't have to be a D pocket. You have a welt and you have a pocket. You actually need two layers of pockets to be functional and their length are different. So the one we just drew, this green color, is the upper pocket. The under pocket should be half of an inch longer than the upper pocket. You see this brown one? I said half of an inch because I'm gonna have one quarter of an inch seam allowance for the welt. The under pocket should be longer by two times of welt seam allowance. I'm going to explain this in a moment. Let's trace them out first. I'm going to have a one quarter of an inch seam allowance to the welt. And the top will be folded. So you are going to cut like this, only one piece. For the pockets, you need seam allowance only on the top, both pieces. And on the front body, make drill holes. Quarter of an inch in both sides. So this distance of the drill holes is half of an inch shorter than the actual welt length. Here's the front body with drill holes, welt, and pocket. Okay, I'm going to explain why the under pocket should be longer than the upper one. Once you stitch up the welt, you are going to place the welt on the front body where the drill holes are and you will stitch here. This seam allowance is quarter of an inch. 
The upper pocket will be sewn with the welt here together. So you have a quarter of an inch seam allowance and 3 inches pocket length. The under pocket should be sewn here. 1 quarter of an inch seam allowance and 1 quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then you're going to cut this line to make a pocket. Because I have a 1 quarter of an inch seam allowance, the under pocket is half of an inch longer than the upper one. 2 times of 1 quarter of an inch. If you have a 5 16 of an inch of seam allowance, then the under pocket should be longer by 5 eighths of an inch, double amount of the seam allowance. It's really important to understand construction to draft patterns. If you're working as a pattern maker, communicate with a sewer or a sample maker as much as you can. It's going to help your pattern makings. Please give me thumbs up and comment below if you like this video. And say hi to me on Instagram or Pinterest with Pattern Studio 101. Have a great week. See you next time.